Hey, greetings, everyone. Lieutenant Colonel Allen West here, and welcome to the Steadfast and Loyal Podcast. Hey folks, Lieutenant Carl Allen West here at Watchtower Firearms. This is the uh, custom design uh, AR-15 that was just made for me. It's got my Steadfast and Laurel logo there. On this side, you can see my signature, my master parachutist wings, of course, American flag. And I just want to tell you that you can't be a great American unless you have a great American weapon. And that's exactly what Watchtower Firearms is building. Great American weapons all American parts manufactured right here in the great state of Texas. And oh, by the way, the, uh, let me see, where is the serial number on this one? TX 1836. If you're from Texas, I think you know what that means. God bless you, God bless Washtow. Hey, Bird Center, yes. Hey, greetings, everyone. Welcome back to the Steadfast and Loyal podcast. There's a lot going on up on Capitol Hill, so I figure we bring in one of the members of Congress back from where I went to school in the great state of Tennessee, and that is Andy Ogles. And Congressman Andy Ogles is a Middle Tennessee native with deep roots dating back to the founding of the state. After graduating from Franklin High School, he married his high school sweetheart, Monica. They currently live on a small farm south of Columbia, Tennessee, with their three children, Adley, Drew, and Isaac. Since 2018, he has served as the mayor of Maori County, Tennessee, and was recognized as Tennessee's most conservative mayor. Andy has fought for limited government, lower taxes, and greater freedom. And in Washington, D.C., he works to preserve a better future for our children and the families of his community. He is humbled and honored to have the opportunity to faithfully represent Tennessee's 5th Congressional District in the United States House of Representatives. Congressman Ogles, thank you for joining us here at the Steadfast and Loyal Podcast. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate that very kind introduction. You know, it's, uh, you know, I, I just come from a working class family, mm -hmm. you know, worked my way up, and, you know, so to be able to uh, to serve in Congress is truly an, uh, an honor. And uh, now keep in mind, in Tennessee, it's, it's spelled Mari, but we say Murray. And so, uh, <laughs> so we're, we're a little country, uh, and we oh, do live back okay. in a valley. And uh, so we were hit hard by that ice storm. And yeah. so, like, I literally, uh, on the way to work uh, this morning, slid down my driveway. Mm. Uh, but you know what? That that's uh, that's we we chose to live in the country. We we like living in the country. Yeah. So it's a it's it's a it's a fun hazard, right? So, but well, it's an honor to be on your show. Well, God bless you, and God bless the people there, and uh, stay safe. You know, when we talk about those basic country values, you know, the right type of worth ethic, you know, what do you see that has been the most shocking thing for you up there in the United States House of Representatives? Well, um, I, I would say kind of two, two things. One is just how hectic it is, uh, you know, until you've been a member, you know, I, I've worked in and around in politics, so I thought I had an idea, but it's, mm -hmm. it's truly chaotic uh, and in, in many ways dysfunctional. And I think that's the part that's disappointing is, is there is a, a great deal of dysfunction. Now, keep in mind, our founding fathers liked gridlock. They designed it for friction. John Quincy Adams uh, talked about how that the, the House of Representatives is where you argued and debated. And so uh, this idea that we're all supposed to bow down and kiss a ring, that's not how I'm programmed. Yeah. Uh, you know, iron sharpens iron. I want to go up there and fight for freedom and liberty. And quite, I would argue, I think we're at this tipping point with our republic. And so you need those voices that are fighting for 
fiscal restraint, like what are we going to do about this debt? What are we going to do about our mm -hmm. southern border? All of those things that you and I know need to be discussed, mm -hmm. but there's some in Congress that love the status quo. Uh, they're, they're intoxicated by the money and the power. For me, I just want to save my republic. Well, you bring up a great point, and let's talk about that because you've got this continuing resolution that's coming up because uh, we have not been able to get to the regular order of passing the 12 appropriations bills on time uh, before the end of the fiscal year. What are your concerns about this continuing resolution, and as it is right now, will you be supporting it? Well, I've not supported uh, any of the continuing resolutions, you know, because I do want us to get back to, to regular order. We've got to have this muscle memory where we go into session, we start passing the appropriations bills, we argue and debate, and we, we get them to the best place that they can be, and then we get them to pass. And look, I know we have a thin margin. I know it may not be pretty, but that's our job. And we're supposed to argue, we're supposed to debate, and we're supposed to pass these bills. And so this idea that we're going to keep kicking the can, we're going to keep con you know, continuing to do continual resolutions, that, that's why we're in this mess. That's why we're careening towards $36 trillion in debt is because the status quo, the, you know, the money machine, if you will, that is D.C. has taken over, and th they love it. All right, you know, because they're getting all of their appropriations, they're getting all of their, their the it's raining money in D.C. Meanwhile, the American people, I mean, I just read an, uh, a statistic, it's 80 percent of America, so that's Republicans and Democrats, 80 percent, so that they are worse off today, the same worse off under Biden than they were under Trump. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. Like, th we're the greatest country in the world. We have a robust, booming economy that should be unleashed. Energy independence is the key to our future. And yeah. what has this administration done? They're undermining the American people. And we as Congress have got to stop this nonsense with continuing resolutions. You know, you're absolutely right. And that was one of the things that I uh, did not like when I was there in Congress, the omnibus spending packages, which is like a spending gumbo. But, you know, I'm here in the state of Texas, and I've been down to the border countless times. You know, why, why is it that the Biden administration, the left, is so uh, instinct on, I guess, undermining our sovereignty and not realizing we don't need to spend more money at the border. We just need the right policies at the border. Well, you know, and, and keep in mind, you know, the Biden administration, you know, is part of these appropriations. They want more money for the border. In reality, what they want is more money to process more people into yeah. this country. Now, keep in mind, and, and, and I tend to be a little bit militant on this issue on the southern border. I think we should close it. I think we should shut it down. I think we stop people coming in and the people that came in here legally, we need to send them some back out. You know, so the state of Tennessee is roughly seven, seven and a half uh, million people. That number of people have come in mm -hmm. under Joe Biden. That changes communities. That changes the, the makeup of who we are as a people. Look, I, I don't blame anyone for wanting to, anyone from wanting to come here. I'd walk over broken glass and through hellfire for my children. But you got to do it the right way. Yeah. And the moment you step across that border and you step on U.S. soil and you do it without permission, you're a criminal. And we should not be allowing criminals and criminals into this country. And you look at these border towns in Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, mm -hmm. it's not safe. And now every small town in America is a border town because of fentanyl. Yeah. We all know someone or, or know a family that's been touched by the fentanyl crisis. And this administration is literally undermining our sovereignty. I would argue that we're being invaded and he's doing nothing about it. Lip service. He might even talk about it, but he's lying to the American people. Well, you will get no argument from people here in Texas who see this invasion every single day. And one of the absurdities is that if you're a ranch owner and you have a little mm -hmm. small farm, you know, ranch owners will be charged with kidnapping if they detain people that are illegally on their property. So, again, it seems that we're not putting Americans, their safety and security first. So that leads me to talk about why is it that you think that the Biden administration is just so hell-bent on having all of this funding in the, the Ukraine war. I get it. You know, Vladimir Putin invaded a sovereign nation, but we're being invaded as well, and we're not putting the proper resources uh, on our own border. Where do you stand on this Ukraine funding? 
Well, I voted against all of the Ukraine supplementals. I think, you know, uh, and I kind of say this tongue in cheek, before I worry about someone else's border, I think we should secure our border. Yeah. And but, but the truth is, is, you know, I don't want to see the American people, the United States of America, drawn into another conflict. Now, we can go back to the whole, they, 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 they disarm the nukes and do we have an obligation to support them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that's a different conversation. You know, we, we have a small farm. Uh, I've got an old tractor. It's old. Uh, the mm -hmm. brakes work most of the time. Uh, and we live on top of a hill. I'm telling you, I need a new tractor. Uh, but that being said, if my roof is leaking, I've got to prioritize where I'm spending my money, yeah. right? I probably should fix my roof, right? I should probably feed my children. The tractor is going to have to wait. And this is the problem with Ukraine is we are prioritizing the Ukrainian economy, their borders over our own. And, and look, I'm not going to be apologetic when I say it's America first. It's not America alone but it should be America first. And so we should not be funding another war. And what we should be doing, when you look at Taiwan, when you look at the saber rattling from China, is encouraging them to spend more money on defense, uh, equipping them with what they need to defend themselves. So in two years, 15 years, however long it takes, we don't get drawn into another conflict because I see that on the horizon. It seems to be inevitable. And trust me, China's paying attention to how we react, what Russia's getting away with. But that being said, we shouldn't be funding a war in Ukraine when our southern border is wide open. No, you're absolutely right. And the fentanyl, as you know, originates out of China. And this <laughs> the collusion with the transnational narco-criminal terrorists, the cartels, who refine it and get across the border. Now, 2024, we all know, is an election year. And that means it's going to be an election focused year in the House of Representatives because every two years by the Constitution, you have to run for office. What do you think logically, reasonably can get done in the United States House of Representatives uh, in this 2024 election year? Well, I think it is going to be a challenge. You know, I think uh, you're starting to sense it in Congress that the people's minds are shifting towards election, towards the presidential race. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll give a shout out to Ron DeSantis for, for dropping out and endorsing Donald Trump. You know, when you look at the, the state of the economy, when you look how the Biden administration has weaponized the Justice Department, when you see uh, the monies in, in, that are being wasted and the, the invasion at the southern border that's impacting blue cities, you got blue mayors crying for help, that it's time to unite around, around one candidate. Donald Trump is going to be the nominee. Donald Trump is going to be our next president. And every dollar that is wasted on this protracted primary is time and monies that should be going elsewhere, like winning the House, like winning the U.S. Senate, and making sure that our republic is safe. 2024 is going to be one of those years. I mean, if you look through the timeline of history, there's those, those, those pins in history where there was a pivotal moment, whether it was an election or a crisis. And 2024 is going to be one of those pins in history that we either we turn back the right direction or we turn and continue down this path of Bidenomics, which is a joke, by the way, because he's done virtually everything wrong when it comes to our sovereignty and the, and the American people. Again, when the middle class is crying out, when you have blue mayors and blue cities saying shut down the border, you've got an administration that's out of touch with the American people because he's bowed, kowtowing to the elite. No, you're absolutely right. And so when I sit back and look at it, I, I don't understand what issues the Biden administration or the Democrats uh, can really run on that they can show the American people they've been successful. So what do you think Republicans have to do? Because, you know, we were there 2022, red wave, blah, 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 blah. And it kind of petered out. What do we need to do to talk about what we're for and not so about much about what we're against going into this cycle? Yeah, I mean, I think people are feeling it. Uh, at the end of the day, I think uh, individuals largely vote with their pocketbook. Mm -hmm. and, and so, again, when you have the, the average American household is spending 11000 more dollars per year, Republican or Democrat, they're feeling it now. When you go to the grocery store, you know, just, just out of curiosity, last night I was looking at house prices and in the rural parts of my district and seeing how the, the housing market, the, the same house pre-COVID was a fraction of what it is today. So the American dream is now out of reach for so many people. You know, this thing that we, we you want your own home, you want this place to call home, that you work hard towards, you save your money, et cetera, et cetera. And now it's, un, it's unattainable. And that's because of Joe Biden. So to, to your question, though, we've got to be clear and communicate and, and be afraid, not be afraid rather to talk about those tough issues. But it's the economy and it's the border and Biden administration 
and all of his cohorts, they've gotten it all wrong and they are to blame. And we've got to be willing to say that. And instinctively, instinctively, the American people uh, uh, see that, believe that and feel that. And I think there's going to be some surprises. I think there's some uh, otherwise blue seats in the U.S. House of Representatives that you might otherwise predict that we would lose that we're going to be able to hold on to because of the economic situation that's unfolding before us. So what's the political atmosphere back in the volunteer state? Well, um, you know, back here in the volunteer state, we are obviously it's a red state. I've arguably got a red district. You know, it's, it's all about uh, the economy and the border. Uh, I think people are excited about the future, but it, it's not the it's not the, the, the volunteer state. It's the, it's the Rust Belt that is the issue. Right. It's it, it is Michigan. It is Wisconsin. It is Pennsylvania. Uh, I, I think thanks to DeSantis and some of the great work he did during COVID, Florida is a solid red state, but we, we've got to be loud. You know, if you're a voter and you're in a red state, you've got to stay engaged. You've got to talk to your uh, member of Congress, shore them up to do the right thing, to continue the fight so the status quo doesn't take over. But, uh, you know, it's an honor to be from Tennessee. I'm a little biased. Uh, I love my middle <laughs> Tennessee. I grew up here. Yeah. Now, my family came from uh, uh, East Tennessee and migrated a long time ago mm -hmm. uh, to middle. But uh, I, I, I'm very proud. And I know you've got roots to Tennessee as well. Well, oh, but, yeah. uh, I appreciate all that you do and all that you've done in the past to serve our country. Uh, it, it's notable. And, and your constituents, my constituents, owe you a great thanks. Well, it's, it's my pleasure. My dad raised me, said, uh, never have people thank you for doing the right thing. And so that's what this is about. Last question I want to ask to you. What is your message to the American people, the folks that will be watching our uh, interview segment here on this podcast in this year, 2024. You kind of touched on it, but I really like for you to inspire them as to the criticality of this election cycle. Well, I would say, you know, I think a lot of people are apathetic, they're frustrated, they're discouraged, may even be scared. But I think I think about our founding fathers. I'm a bit of a nerd, and you know, the 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 uh, the the hour is darkest right before the dawn mm -hmm. and how discouraged they may have been at times when they're fight, fighting uh, an impossible empire but they never gave up hope never fought they, they never stopped fighting for the right thing they continue to push forward they continue to believe and they prayed quite frankly and i would encourage your constituents to pray to have hope and to continue to keep up the fight because at the end of the day what happens to this republic is up to us and if we concede if we can see it, it's on us. And so uh, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to back down. You know, as one of the more conservative members of Congress, I'm a member of the House Freedom Caucus, and I'll serve on the board of the House Freedom Caucus. I tend to be loud about where I am on the, the issues, but we need more of that. And, and you know, we're not always going to agree, but what you can say about me and a lot of members of the House Freedom Caucus, you know where we stand. We, we put our plan out there, and we keep fighting, and we keep moving forward. And if we make a mistake, we're going to own it and we're going to keep fighting, and we're going to keep m moving forward. But again, I appreciate all of you do, and I appreciate all of your listeners as well. Well, thank you so very much. Congressman Andy Ogles of Tennessee's 5th Congressional District, I appreciate you joining us here at the Staff Pass and Loyal Podcast. How can people follow you and support you from all across the nation and what you're doing there in Tennessee and in the uh, United States House of Representatives? Yeah, well, easy to find, andyogles.com. You can go to Rep Ogles on Twitter or X or Twix, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, but I, we're out there. We've got a newsletter you can sign up for. We're not going to bombard you with information, but we give you relevant information and we try to give it to you in a timely manner. So feel free to check us out, or reach out to us, and uh, keep up the fight. And I don't know if anyone has told you, but you do have a striking resemblance to Senator Rand Paul. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you, well, you I don't know have, if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but well, well, I, like I mean, Rand he's a, he's a straight shooter. He's a good guy, and uh, but you got that resemblance. And uh, and again, thank you for your endorsement of President Trump. And and I agree with you. We need to get this whole primary thing behind us and get our resources focused. So thank yes, you for sir. joining us here. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this segment of the uh, Steadfast and Loyal Podcast. If you enjoy this segment, enjoy this podcast, please click the like button, share for others, and support. Great members of Congress, uh, such as Representative Andy Ogles, because many people say, you know, who are the good guys? Well, Andy Ogles is one of the good guys. And until next time, be steadfast and loyal. Before they burn it down.